Hi, good evening. How are you today? I'm okay. 
Excellent. Very nice. I see. No, anyone. Nobody has a login. arrived yet. No, you're the first one today. <laughs> okay. It's a record. <laughs> yeah, very good. It was, I think it was on uh, Monday. It was Diana, the first one in class. And she's like, oh my goodness, I'm so ashamed. I'm like, why? And she's like, oh, because I'm the first one in class. <laughs> so. Yeah, this is the way it is. Mm. No, it's tough. It's tough taking two hours online. It's, it's really tough. It is. It's big, but it's just um, how to say <clears throat> the your will. It's a personal voluntad. How do you say? Yeah, it's your will. Yeah, your will uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. to to stay on an online class because yeah, uh, maybe a few years ago you had to mm. take a bus or right or, or <laughs> take a or drive your car. Right, yeah, of course. Then go oh, take a bus and go to a, to a school. Right. And they take English classes for two hours. Right. Every day for two hours. Mm -hmm. Now, so it's cheaper because we right. are not leaving home. We are right. not spending in gas or, or transportation. Traffic or time. <laughs> Traffic. Yeah. Um, I, I think some people don't see that advantages right i know uh -huh. i know but you know what online classes or online trainings or online whatever is not for everybody though uh -huh. right it has to like yeah it has a lot to do with will like you were saying mm -hmm. and also with you know just like accepting and being part of the new world we have now is right? the new normal uh -huh. yeah that this is the new normal that's right yeah mm -hmm. so i don't think to the old normal, the normal that we used to know, you know. <laughs> Not too soon. Not too soon. Even right. even companies will discover that they they save money. They save by, lots of money by having uh -huh. people from work from their home working. From their homes, uh -huh. Right. Partially. Yes. But you know what though? It's unfortunate that uh -huh. companies in El Salvador will take advantage of it, but in their like for their uh -huh. own good you know because i don't know i was i was listening to um uh, watching someone, the news no mm -hmm. no i was actually reading something and they were saying that in countries for example like uh sweden and mm -hmm. switzerland and those mm -hmm. like you know those countries <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. they actually i mean they they have discovered what you just told me that they can actually like have people working from home but what they are doing now is they are giving a bonus piece or to the people so they can adjust the an office space in their homes all right and they are not discounting if for example if you used to get i don't know 500 euros or whatever to say something uh -huh. uh, you're getting the same amount of money it doesn't matter that you are from home you know they plus your normal salary the one that you have they give you a bonus so you can readjust your home uh, and, you, and you have your place right home, you huh? know so i'm thinking oh cool you know just like in el salvador you know but here people are saying well you're working from home so you're not i mean spending gas money you're not spending transportation they're gonna reduce, reduce so i'm gonna the reduce the payment but it's like okay but my bills are the same and you're not paying mm -hmm. me viaticos you're paying me for what i do you know so it's 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 really difficult in these kind of countries because people take advantage of to their own uh benefit and we'll see we'll see yeah Hopefully they won't listen to me, but I, I fear that that's, that's what's going to happen in many, in many companies, you know, or they would have like, you know, like both possibilities. If you want to work in the office, this is the, how much mm -hmm. I'm going to pay you. And if you want to work from home, this is how much I'm going to pay you for that. So yeah. it's like you can choose, you know, but many people are going to choose to work from home because they are home, you know, but it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's, but it's most likely to happen. Right. The, the situation you're describing is most likely to happen here. That's right. And well, the, here the <clears throat> the how to say the entrepreneur, the private private businesses. The private businesses are accustomed to 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 cheap uh, waves. I mean, to right. pay a little. Right. And not to 
not to get more value on the technology. Right. So there's a, also a transformation going on here. Of course, yes. But, uh, well, we'll see. I wouldn't say no, it's not, <laughs> this is not political. That's it. That's no, it. <laughs> I know. No, of course not, you uh -huh. know, but this is how it's always been, you know, like the big people are the big people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we are not the big people, so it's kind of difficult. Yeah. 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 What about in the type of, I mean, in the job that you guys do at the place that you work at, eh, Oscar, do you think a lot of people are like going to be, or the company is going to say, okay, like people can work from home and that's not possible because of the type of job you do? Well, so, well, SEPA is a good place to work. Mm -hmm. It's stable. Uh, I mean, uh, you're, you're uh, but steady. I right. Said, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other day, but yeah, steady, uh -huh. like, yeah. And we were talking about that. But yeah, it's the uh, the the oldest people. Mm -hmm. They sent sent them home, and we are taking their places, and we have we are making a rotation. So mm -hmm. some co-worker of mine, they are girls, they and they are they are working as a secretary. Okay. For two hours. For a few hours because the secretary is, is more than 60 years old so she's at home okay and maybe uh, some people will have the chance some just few okay and the and the oldest they are going to be out or maybe they will be forced to retire oh my goodness but okay. they are but they treat uh, how to say they have a good um, separate service company all right for, for all people for all, but for young people uh well they are rotating from secretary even uh, even me last time i went to to carry some some water garrafones how do you say water containers mm -hmm. for the oasis i mean the, the, the Okay, we do the okay. the the tasks of the of the ordinanza, okay. <laughs> the secretary, uh, another secretary, and maybe two two man that they they all in and two co-workers. Uh, they they some uh, they are five, and we do their job because they are uh they pass yeah. the the 60 years old so they mm -hmm. they are they were sent home and we are doing their their, their okay their duties the job? all right they, okay. i had the duties beside our ah. duties it's our duties uh -huh. but it's okay. uh, in ge in general terms it is a good company right yeah of course mm -hmm. very good all right so hello irene and ellie and diana and jennifer we missed you so much jennifer yesterday and henry very nice hello. Hi. Good evening, Hi. how are you today irene how was your day today good evening teacher aha uh -huh. jennifer what happened yesterday everything okay you were okay <laughs> I uh, really not teacher. Yesterday I was sick again. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I hope you feel uh, better. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Today I I feel a little better. Better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, take care of yourself, Jennifer. Okay. Yes, teacher. Thank take, you. take medicine. Rest, okay, very nice. Okay, let's see. Uh, hi, Irene. How was your day today? I can't hear you, Irene. Oh, very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to hear that, Irene. Yes, all right. Okay, um, I'm glad to see you smiling. <laughs> very good. All right, let's see, Henry. What about you? My day is fine, teacher, but in this moment it's raining a lot. It was I raining. Oh my goodness, you know what? It has been raining all day. Well, not all day, but all afternoon at my house that it was pouring rain. I'm like, oh my goodness, 
All right, because it was heavy, heavy rain. I don't know, like in, yes, yes, well, yes. in Henrito's place, it's raining. What about uh, Diana? Is it raining by your house? No? Yes, it is raining right now. Mm, all right, okay. But not really heavy. Oh, really? And it didn't rain in the afternoon there either, Diana? Yes, it was raining uh, in the afternoon. Uh, it was raining more okay heavy than right now than right now all right i get it all right very good all right so eli how was your day today elita eli Larin, how was your day <laughs> hi teacher i i have a good day all right i visited the, the uh, my sister oh really yes That's nice all right yes, very I good do. Okay, very good. All right, nice. Okay, Jose Luis, how are you today? Jose Luis, can you hear us? Jose Luis is hiding today. <laughs> That's okay, Jose Luis, I can hear you. Hi, good evening. Is it raining by your house? Yes, it's raining. Yeah, I imagine. Yeah, same here. Okay, very yeah. good. All right, okay, but you, I'm I'm happy you're with us right now. Hi, Oscar. Uh, Oscar, is it raining by your house, by the way? Oscarito. Uh, Oscar is probably like not there right now. Okay, so Diana, your day at work, everything okay? Yes, teacher. It was a really, really good day today. Oh, that's nice. You're always so like optimistic, Diana. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I try was, to, to it, keep on um, optimistic. Yes, yeah, so it's course. really important for me. Of course, <laughs> yes. It has well, it should be for everyone, but you know, sometimes we complain so much, eh? We shouldn't, <laughs> I think. I mean, you know, people have I don't know. We all have problems and everything, but some people are like, you know, like really dealing with very difficult stuff. So I think we shouldn't complain them. All right, very good. All right, Ellie, that's okay. That's okay, but you, I know you're there. Plus you look beautiful in that picture, so it's okay. <laughs> all right, very good, <laughs> <Thank> guys. <you. laughs> all right, so yesterday, guys, we were talking about millennials and most of you, Except, man, well, now today, Jennifer, Jennifer's not a millennial. All right. No, right, no. Jennifer? No, she says no. I'm before. <laughs> Me too, Jenny. Me too. <laughs> Very good. You, Norma, Oscar, and myself, we're not millennials. We're a generation before. We're Gen X. Most of your classmates, uh, Jennifer, they are millennials. All right. So yesterday, we were talking about some characteristics of millennials. All right. Uh, let me see. Can you guys recall or remember any of the um, of the characteristics that we were talking about yesterday from millennials? Can you tell me one of the characteristics that you may remember? I cannot hear you. Um, right now, I can hear you a little bit better. Okay. Are people who normally very young? Okay, they're young, yes. Until 1981. Yeah, about that, yes. Uh -huh. uh, normally, are very. Egocentrical. <laughs> All right, just a little bit. <laughs> Egocentrical. Uh, also, are very egotistical. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. In, in some cases, uh, they are uh, very complicated. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Irene. Very nice. All right. Let's see. Oscar, what, what do you remember about. Um, some of the characteristics from millennials from yesterday's class. Yeah, self-centered, like they are self-centered. Yes. <laughs> self-centered, like yes. egotistical. All right. Uh, I said carefree. Uh huh. But it's a but carefree is just on a stereotype. Right. Yes. Because, because uh, we 
review. Uh -huh. and, uh, some real characteristics of them. Right, yes. And, and one of, as I said yesterday, uh, I admire the, the millennials mm -hmm. because they defend the, their rights. That's right, yes. They fight for their rights. And yes. It's good, it's good. It is, it right. is. Uh, uh huh. Very but, good. Uh, at, at least they are, uh, how to say, for a good uh, cause. That's or, right. Uh, okay. For a good cause, because uh, right. some people just, just uh, how to say, um, que pelean por nada. They fight yeah, for, they fight for uh, nothing. Some people fight for nothing, but right. sometimes they have, a, sometimes they have their reason. That's they, right. They they are right sometimes. They're right. Yeah, uh -huh. very good. All right. Look at the Anita's is smiling and she's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, don't go there. I'm a millennial, right? <laughs> All right, Diana, do you remember or any of the characteristics that we were talking about yesterday? Yes, we were talking about uh, two kinds of characteristics. Some of them, the, the were the characteristics that the people keep to the millennials okay they say that the millennials are selfish lazy ignorant <laughs> okay <laughs> and the <laughs> list goes on and, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking at the end of the class that mm -hmm. uh, millennials uh, looks themselves has uh, universal tenacious okay. mm -hmm. that they make the world a better place a better place mm -hmm. and driving Driven, 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 driven. Mm -hmm. and, all right, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, all right, very good. Henry, Eli, or Jose Luis, do you remember any other characteristics that we talked about yesterday? Yes, yes teacher. When oh. uh, yesterday I told with uh, these millennial people was born in the technology, technology is done, right? Uh, and the video I watched the different opinion about the different right. person, right. Uh, different generation. Mm -hmm. uh, different generations say the millennial people are willful of ignorance, mm -hmm. uh, they buy babies and that's loyally, but mm -hmm. the people, mm -hmm. the millennial people say different. Things. Right, yeah. They say, they say, see you, sir, see you, see you today is a uh, universal right uh, they always watch different opportunities right the uh, next solution right okay of. okay very good all right now uh what about jose luis do you remember anything jose luis and Nelly? do you remember any of the other ones or you agree with what your classmates are saying yes i, I agree teacher i remember that the Millennials are the people that born with the old facilities, facilities okay. with right. but the, sometimes the problem is with this generation that mm -hmm. sometimes they are lazy, selfish, okay. egoistical. All right. Okay. Very good. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Ellie, I don't know if you're going to say something or, or uh, you're okay. Uh, I don't remember. I remember that the millennial is um, the global generation. Right. Global generation. That's right. Um, is conscious. conscious. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah, it's conscious. The yeah, environment. Very good. The envi very good, Ellie. Super nice. Very good. Yeah. Okay, very nice. All right, guys. So thank you, Ellie. Thank you. And thank all of you thank because you were like, remember about what we, what we talked about yesterday. Now, today, also, in the topic of today's class, which is the stereotypes about millennials. All right. So, uh, Jennifer, I know you were not in class yesterday, but you have heard some of the. Um, your classmates' comments about the characteristics that we were talking about the millennials uh, have, all right? Sometimes, Jennifer, and this is for everybody, sometimes these characteristics are given to millennials in a, in a 
maybe confused way, in a wrong way. Maybe they are not like that. Not all of them, all right? Or not just because you're a millennial, you are like that. Because, I mean, we, I believe, and I don't know if you guys agree or not, but I believe that in any type of generation, all right, you have people that are like self-centered, all right, or they are self-entitled, or they are like willing for uh, ignorant, all right? I think it happens in every, in every generation, not only on millennials, but, all right, these characteristics are very you know, like they belong to millennials, all right? And they, some of them fall into the category of stereotypes, all right? So tonight we're going to be talking about stereotypes of millennials of what people think about them, all right? And why they think about them like that, all right? So we're going to be reading, we're going to be watching a video, actually two videos. Um, you know what, the videos that I have for you, they're like quite interesting and they are a little longer. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing them and we're going to be talking about it, all right? Because they last like about 10 minutes. So what I want to do is like we can discuss as we're listening, all right? Jesse and Nubia, welcome to class. Thank you for joining us another night. I do appreciate it and I'm very happy to see you both, all right? So guys, we're talking, we're talking about millennials again. We're talking about the stereotypes that are like around them, all right? But now, watching videos or before we start reading about this topic, I'm going to share my presentation with you. And the first question, guys, I'm going to be asking here is, well, this is what we have here. We are going to be able to describe about the stereotypes about millennials, all right? So we're gonna talk about the stereotypes that are around millennials. We're gonna describe them. And then as always, I do ask from you to participate, all right? And give us your opinion, even if you're not a millennial, but you work with a millennial, you have a child that is a millennial, all right? So you know people or you work with people that are millennials, all right? So you may also like give your opinion on this matter. All right, so my first question here is, what is a stereotype? Who can tell me what a stereotype is? I'm not asking you about the stereotypes of millennials. I'm asking the word. How would you define what is a stereotype? If I don't know and someone tells me, how would you define it? What is a stereotype for you? Guys, anybody? You're quiet because it's Wednesday, huh? <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like a patron system. It's like a it's what? Like a it is? It's like a patron or like a... Uh, Just give me a second, Jenny. I, 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 I'm having trouble understanding your audio today, Eden. I don't know why. But it's raining it now? Uh, maybe. A little bit better. Okay. It's a... Uh, is, is like a pattern or a model? Okay, a, a pattern or a, a model. All right, okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh -huh, Jennifer, you were saying? Yes, it's a, a characteristic I have of the, the, the this class, this type of people. All right, but I just want you to tell me what the stereotype is. Don't think about the stereotypes of millennials. Just tell me what is a stereotype. How would you explain to me that word? Yes. Uh-huh. Stereotype. Uh-huh. Um, I think it's when, when somebody is, uh, is close in the, in, inside the, the the many kinds of uh, characteristics or okay. uh, maybe in the in, in their um uh attitudes okay all right about the the, the people about yes. people all right in general very good thank you jennifer very nice all right anybody else what is a stereotype for you i think that stereotypes oh. are preconceived ideas mm, about, very nice yes about some about a group of people okay or about uh -huh, about the kind of people okay very good thank you very good yes jesse you were gonna say something yes i think that stereotype is like a 
that expectation mm -hmm. that what people had about what people can be about one generation about the okay. one groups of people or can be about the business too okay it's the force that people think about that kind of thing or the or people's all right okay very nice very good all right anybody else Nubia, Oscar, Jose Luis, Henrito, Gerardo, Eli, Moises, what's the stereotype? Maybe teacher is the, the fiction, the, the hype or the person. Mm -hmm. Okay, the behavior. All right, very good. Aha, uh -huh, Oscar, I want to hear you. <laughs> Maybe it's what we think or mm. how to say, we don't know the, uh, a person Okay. or a group of People. Right. Yes, I mean, a course. group of people. A people. No, a group of people. <laughs> a group of people. Yes. We very don't good. know them. We don't know them. But there's a there's a I forgot that word. Uh, there's a there's something that that defines them. That is not true. Sometimes, sometimes it's true. Sometimes right, it's true. Yeah. But we we think uh, uh, that people listen is are uh, in that way. Okay. We don't know them. We don't know right. them. Right. Right. Yes. It's like um, it's like uh, how to say when you meet someone and you don't know. I mean, right. you don't even know someone, and you say, "Ah, oh, this this guy is doesn't makes me feel this good or right. or safe okay. or okay. comfortable." Right. And you say, and you start with the stereotypes because of their appearance. Right. Or because we have a list. A checklist uh -huh. <laughs> of what, right? Uh, given the nationality, their their um, uh, their payment wave, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all things, we have a list and we check right. them. Uh, we we think something that is not true about this people. Okay. The others, right. is that for me, that is a stereotype. That's right. Very good. Thank uh -huh. you. All right. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Vero. Very nice to have you in class. All right. Very good. Hi. Anybody else? What What is a stereotype? For you, what is what is a stereotype? How do you explain it? How do you define the word? Me, teacher. Uh -huh, Eli. Thank you. I think you. The, the stereotype is uh, imagine, false imagine of uh, false. the society. So oh, all right. the, the person. All right. Example, stereotype for woman. Ah. For men. Okay. Uh, the woman is is color pink. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, and men is, is blue. blue. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. All right. Yeah. That's a stereotype. Very good. Thank you, Ellie. Very nice. All right, anybody else, Verito or Andre or Moises, what is the stereotype for you? Or Henry or Gerardo or Nubia? For me, teacher. <laughs> yes, for Gerardo. Me, stereotype uh, is a mistaken idea. Excellent, very nice. Um, stereotyping people is a type of preju prejudice. Prejudice, prejudice, yes, okay. This uh, is a small part of the who a person is. That's right. Very good. Thank You're you, genius. Gerardo. Yeah. You're a genius. Wow. <laughs> He's enlightened today. Oh my goodness, Gerardo. <laughs> Very nice, Gerardo. Very nice definition. All right. Anybody else? Verito, Andre? What's a stereotype for you? I think that it's like uh, create an idea of someone or something based, based Based, based, in, yes. Based in 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 one experience that is not general, but do generalize. Okay. You generalize it. Wow, very nice. Wow, you guys, my goodness, you're like, you know, very wise today. Very nice. Of course, you're wise every day. Very good. What else? Anybody else? Any anybody else about stereotyping? What's a stereotype? Aha, Vero, for you. Tell us what stereotype is for you, Verito. For me, it's um, an idea, a gener generalized idea yes. about a um, specific group of people. Okay. All right. Yes. Very nice. Okay. Very good. Anybody else? Or we're okay? 
All right, so I'm going to... Yes, Rosalind, yes. Okay, uh, in my point of view, it's a, a part or idea of the, the, of a group or society, but sometimes the, this is a mistake because uh, sometimes people think that the thing is in that way, but mm -hmm. not always because in this, in this case, we are talking about millennials, mm -hmm. and we think that millennia is just for young people right but uh, uh, if they, or people can be millennial too because if they learn about technology mm. is uh, they, be it's they millennial become millennials <laughs> all right cool yes <laughs> i have hope <laughs> I <think>. all right, <laughs> all, right. That's, that's <laughs> all right very good interesting very good all right guys that's why i like to listen to all of your opinions because of course we're like 14 people you know, like uh, providing information, which is fun, you know, because it's nice to hear other people's point of view. All right. So, and usually we don't talk about these topics in daily, daily, daily basis in English. So when you, I mean, that's quite interesting. All right. So here I have guys, uh, what is the definition of uh, a stereotype? Oops, hold on. And we have it here. Uh, who wants to read it for me? Stereotype in social psychology. Who can read it? Me, teacher. Thank you, Diana. In social psychology, a stereotype is an overgeneralized belief about a particular category of people. Category. Category of people. It is an, expe an expectation that people might have about every person of a particular group. The type of expectation can vary. Very. 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 Mm -hmm. Very. It can be, for example, an expectation about the group's personality, preferences, or a fee. Continue, please. Stereotypes, okay. Stereotypes are generalized because one assumes that the stereotype is true for each individual person in the category. 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 <laughs> category, yes. Category. While such generalizations may be useful when making quick decisions, they may be erroneous when applied to particular individuals. Thank you. Continue. Mm -hmm. Stereotypes lead to social categorization, which is one of the reasons for, for prejudice, prejudice? prejudice attitudes and may arise for a number of reasons. Thank you. All right. So if you notice, guys, this definition, I mean, this definition is on Google. All right, you can Google it if you want to, but I, I really like the definition because it's pretty much what everybody has said here in class, all right? So if you notice, this is from the point of view of social psychology, it's not my point of view. It says a stereotype is an overgeneralized belief about a particular category of people, in this case, millennials. Uh, it's an expectation that people might have about every person or a particular group. And this is like, sometimes that's why we have stereotypes because we expect people to behave a certain way. We expect people to say things in a certain way, all right? And sometimes we shouldn't be expecting anything from anybody, all right, to avoid those stereotypes, all right? Uh, the, the type of expectations can vary, all right? It can be, for example, an expectation about group's personality, preferences, or abilities, all right? A stereotype because one assumes that the stereotype is true for each individual person in the category, all right? So, for example, if Diana is like this, then I believe that Jennifer is like that, Andrea is like that, Ellie is like that, eh, Nuvia is like that, Jess is like that. So, I'm stereotyping just because Diana is like that, all right? So, I said, oh, so Diana is a millennial, for example, and she's lazy. I'm, I know you're not, Dianita, right? Uh, but then I believe that all the millennials are lazy based on Diana, all right? And that is not true, all right? And maybe not even Diana is lazy, but I'm expecting Diana to work as many hours as I do, all right? And because she works less or she works in a flexible job, then I assume or I stereotype her that she's lazy. All right, so that's why expectations sometimes are like they play a trick on your mind because you're expecting 
someone to behave like you behave, all right? Or like you do things. And then, then it's a whole mess, all right? It says here, uh, while such generalizations may be useful when making quick decisions, they, be, they may be erroneous when applied to particular individuals. If stereotypes lead to social categorization, which is one of the reasons for prejudice attitudes and may arise for a number of reasons, all right? So that, that is what a stereotype is according to this Wikipedia definition, all right? So, but I really like the definition. Hi, Williams, nice to have you in class. All right, now, I'm gonna ask you something, all right? Um, what happens when, let's say you are at your job, doesn't matter the type of job you do, all right? You are at your office, you're in the school, you are in the uh, airport, you are in the funeral home, you're on the in NGO, you are where you are working. And then someone comes in, all right, this guy, let's talk about guys here, men, all right, this man comes to the uh, office or to your, to your workplace and he is tattooed. I mean, he has tattoos all over his body, like he's you know, you can see his tattoos, maybe not on the forehead with no numbers. I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about tattoos. All right. Just any tattoo on in like on his arms and he, you can, you know, he's green. He looks green because he has many tattoos. All right. What comes to your mind when you see him? And this is a general question. What comes to your mind when he comes and says, hi, uh, can you help me? because he's coming, you know, into your business, into your organization, because he needs something. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Honestly speaking, Pinky promise you'll be honest. <laughs> okay, teacher. Uh -huh. In my case, I don't like the, the tattoo person. Okay. I really, I, I don't like. Okay. So the first thing that comes but to your mind is I, I don't like it. Respect. Okay. All right. No, I don't like. Okay. Now let's say but, that the, uh -huh. uh, yes, yes. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. Yes. But I respect the decision to the people to the people uh, when put whatever tattoo. All right. Okay. But uh -huh. um, maybe for for the for the situation in our country. Yes. Um, uh, all people think, uh -huh. in my case, think, uh, no, thought, uh -huh. thought uh, that the people talk is a bad person, but okay. it's not really. All right. Because uh, um, in, in the, in the, in, Around the around the years, and I know many kind of people, and I I know uh -huh. uh, uh, persons with tattoo, mm -hmm. but they are professionals. Okay, people. right. Okay, they now, are professional Jenny, people. Jenny, okay. Uh huh. But take the decision. Uh, uh, they like tattoo. the tattoos. Right. Okay. Now, Jenny, when yes. this person, That's... let's say that this, I don't know, we're going to name him. Um, how can we name him? We are going to name him Arturo. All right. <laughs> this Arturo guy comes to the office where you work or the workplace that you work at. The first thing that comes to your mind is he's a bad Is that the first thing that you come, it comes to your mind about... when you see him? Um, in, in, oh. uh, in the, how do you say teacher? No, in this time, in this mm -hmm. time, I seem different. Okay. Uh, I respect uh, the, the people and I don't frighten when I see him, see them. Okay. Before. You did. Many years ago. I frame in when 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 I when you saw, saw someone tattoo this uh, this kind of people. But All right. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yes, someone tattoo. But okay. in this time, I I know. So you relax. If so you see I, him, I, then you're relaxed. Yes. 
Okay, very good. All right, yes. what about the rest but, of you guys? Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh, Dianita, yes. I, I think that my first reaction mm -hmm. would be to see if the tattoos are like artistic or, uh -huh. or if they are like from gangsters. All right, but it is artistic. Let's say it's artistic. There's no numbers anywhere. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. So I, in my case, it, it would be good for me. I wouldn't be like afraid. You wouldn't. Or something. Right. I would okay. be. Okay, afraid. very good. All right. What about the rest of you guys? If you see him coming in, you know, he's okay, like. Okay, sure. Yes, Jesse. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> people, but my fear thinking is. Uh, that people is a gay member. Okay. And I have to be uh, carefully okay. with talk with him or, or okay. her. Okay. But depending to the people because I see my classmate university mm -hmm. in a few a few times. Yes. Uh, I go and he had a lot of tattoos. Okay. <laughs> when I see coach, uh, he had lost the way <laughs> in my mind. Okay. But then I told with him uh, and my mind, my mind. Your mind changed. Yes. Okay. Changed. Okay. Because the first thing I, I think is a gang member. All right, a gang member. All right, very good. All right. What about the rest of you guys? And what about men? Uh -huh. Williams, Gerardo, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, let's go. Gerardito, uh -huh. uh, for me, teacher, uh, for me, it's something normal. Okay. I have many tattoo friends and. No, because they have them, they are less than the other people. Right, okay, all right. They are a, a happy person and kind. And <laughs> right, bad. okay. People, also many times they are stigmatized. Yeah. For the relating them to, to criminal groups. Right. Just for wearing this type of the body art. Right. There are different types of tattoo. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good, interesting. But, Okay, Williams. Okay, uh, but okay. Definitely, I would think this guy is living my dream. <laughs> 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 I, I gonna do this, but I can't because uh, in this country, that is a good idea. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. Any problem with people who have a tattoos? I admire. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. very good. Interesting. Thank you, Williams. All right, two more. Uh huh. Well, I think uh, um, uh, some people have a bad, bad taste for tattooing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, of course. See, uh, okay, they, they, they look, uh, I mean, some tattoos look like uh, cartoons. Right. Uh, and well, uh, I dislike the bad tattoos. All right, really. okay. And some people. <laughs> Some people, um, we stereotype uh, people, but uh, I agree with Williams. Mm -hmm. In El Salvador, it's, it's not a good idea. It's not a good but, idea. All for right. example, in my company, uh -huh. uh, if if someone is in a in a process of selection for a for a new person, uh -huh. Uh -huh. they will be the they will be dropped out or, or oh they will be dropped out from the from the from okay. the queue. Okay. So some 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 coworkers uh, they tattoo themselves after 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 <laughs> getting the job after getting the job. Oh, okay, cool. All right, uh, okay, all right, so very good. For me, it's it's not bad, not good, but um, in this country, it's, it's the country is not, not a good place. Yeah, uh -huh, I have we are not so. ready for all it. All right, okay, yeah, all right. So I was I was <laughs> yeah I was asking you this. <laughs> yeah. People who have a nice tattoos or an artistic tattoos, right. not from the job. 
All right. Okay. Yeah, you know, I think we, as a country, as El Salvador, we still stereotype a lot, all right? And this is what, exactly what Oscar is saying, because if they see, if they're getting a job or trying to get a job and they see the people that are hiring, they see the tattoos, then this guy is not going to be on the selection process, just food, all right? So it has to do a lot with the country that we live in, all right? But again, these are stereotypes that we have as a country, as a nation, as people, like individual people, all right? Like some of you, like Jenny was saying, no, I don't like tattoos. I don't mind them. I mean, I respect that they did them, all right? But I don't like it, all right? Uh, Jesse was saying, when, when I saw one of my classmates, I thought, oh my goodness, he lost his way, all right? And, and Jesse was there to help him with God, right? But then she realized that he wasn't a bad guy. So we do have stereotypes. And I could go on and on asking you questions about what do you think about, you know, like um, people that, I don't know, like any type of questions. And a lot of us, we still have stereotypes about it, all right? But we're not going to go into the general stereotyping. We're going to talk about the stereotypes that millennials, I'm sorry, guys, <laughs> that people think about you. My goodness. Eh? But you know what? I'm thinking. Remember I told you I was born 1978. <laughs> All right. So I'm a year and a half because my birthday is in June. So I'm a, I'm a year and a half before millennials generation. All right. But I think, and I'm going to tell you why. I think I'm still a little bit, así como tocando lo último de los millennials, right? Because uh, a lot of it, they talk a lot about flexibility on the jobs, all right? And, and Diana was saying the other, I mean, yesterday, and she, was, she mentioned that before, she was saying, I used to have a, no, a, a job, you know, but now that, I mean, she decided to go and have her own business and everything, of course, she has the other type of flexibility, because she, I mean, to say something, she can go in and out and nobody's going to ask her anything because she's her own boss, all right? So, I mean, that's flexibility. So I, if I think about me, guys, I do think in a way I like that flexibility because in my case, I have, I really like working the way I work. I know I'm not referring about now because, I mean, everything has changed because of this pandemic situation but I have never liked the idea of working in one place for eight hours a day. That's not for me. Has never been for me. I can't, I will die if I'm in an office for eight hours. I seriously die, <laughs> all right? So, I mean, I have always, I began teaching when I was 19, all right? So I've been teaching since I was 19. So I'm, I've been teaching for the last 22 years. But the teaching job gives you, in a way, a flexibility of working. For example, if you work in a school, you can work only the morning or you can only work in the afternoon. All right. Plus the other, a lot of job we do with the grading and all that. But that's, I mean, but also in my case, I teach at universities, but I, I work for hours. I don't work like from eight to five. All right, so I, I go to one university, then I move to the other one, then I'm teaching at the academy, and I go and I, I have a life, I see the light, you know, and, and I think that's the way millennials think, and I do, I, in a way I was thinking about it, oh my goodness, I'm, I have a little bit of millennials. <laughs> I am not one, but I, in a way I'm, I'm, you know, I was touching the generation, so it's quite interesting. All right, so here we have, uh, we have this here, guys. Um, the other one, I want you, oh, well, you know what? Oh, no, hold on, don't look at it. No, no, don't, forget it. I'm gonna show you this. Hold on, guys, that wasn't it. It's this right here. This is what I want you to work on right now. If you have the manual, it's good for you that you have it and then just check on the page. I think we are on page two. All right, page 20, yeah, page 22. If not, just take a picture of it right now. What I want you to do right now, I'm gonna send you to your groups and I want you to come up with a definition of what job hoppers, job tenure, and stereotype, well, stereotype we already discussed, and boost mean, all right? Diana, don't look it up on Google, all right? 
<laughs> I'm kidding, Diana. All right, so come up with the definition of what is a job hopper, what is a job tenure, what is a uh, and boost. Don't do stereotype because we already did. So in your groups, what I want you to do is I want you to discuss what these mean and how do you define it, all right? I'm not asking to define if you are one like that. I'm asking what does the word mean, all right? All right, so come up with those uh, definitions of job hoppers and the other, uh, the other two. Don't do stereotype because we already talked about it. All right, so those are the ones right now. All right, so what we're going to do, you know what? I'm gonna take attendance right now. So you guys um, are there on your groups for a little bit. All right, so we have here, uh, oops, my pen, where did I put it? Eh, Nancy Elizabeth Larin Chavez. Present teacher. Thank you. What day is it today, guys? The 26th, right? All right. Eh, Erika Lirio Perez Diaz. Eh, Eric Mauricio. Paredes Hernandez. No. Henry Vladimir del Citepas. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Luis Rivera Gutierrez. Present. Thank you. Moises Eduardo Alas Roque. Present. Oscar Armando Bonilla Flores. Present. Thank you. Cruz Yesenia Maldonado Tejada. Present. Uh, Cla Diana Gabriela, donde iba a cambiar su nombre, Diana. Diana Gabriela Hernández Morales, I'm sorry. Present. <laughs> it's Wednesday. Uh, let me see. Andrea Maria Trabanino Alfaro. Present. William, thank you. Williams Alexander Rodriguez Argueta. Present. All right. Uh, Francisca Irene Lima Hernandez. Present. Guillermo Antonio Amaya Escobar. All right. Jennifer Carolina Costa Bonilla. Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Gerardo Daniel Gómez Rodríguez. Present. Norma Araceli Rivera Rivera. Normitas, Norin. No. All right. Um, Elizabeth del Carmen Salguero. Romero. No. Silvia Marisol Villalta Martínez. Verónica Lisset Soto Serna. Verito. Present. Thank you. Nubia Araceli Cortez Amaya. Nubia Araceli, ahí está, there she is, she's present. Okay, guys, so what I want you to do is I want you to go and define it. Please don't Google it, share your answers with your peers, and then we're coming back and discuss the definitions, and then I have some questions for you, okay? You know what, just give me a second. You know what we're going to do? Hold on, I know what we're going to do. Whoops. Just give me one quick second. I just, I just wanna fix something here so we can, you can work on these questions too, along with um, the difference. Just give me a second. All right, yeah, okay. So guys, this is what we're going to do. I want you to take a, hi. Oh, Silvita is here, Silvita. Silvia, it's nice to have you in class. Silvia, diga presente. Acabo de pasar asistencia porque íbamos a un grupo, pero no importa. Aquí está. Silvia Marisol Villalta Martínez. Present. Thank you. <laughs> Just give me a second, Silvia. Ahí la, la tacho aquí porque ya vino. Very good. All right, very good. Okay, so do me a favor, guys, please. Can you take a picture of this too? So you guys can work on it. Hold on here. All right, I'm just gonna make it bigger. So take a picture of this. This is about job hopper. So what you have to do is define it and then answer these questions, okay? Got it, guys? Yes. yes. And then the same thing. Define job tenure and then answer these questions. All right, finished. 
finished, guys? Yes. All right. Okay. So do the definition first and then answer those questions, okay? There you go. The rooms are all open now. In the same. In the same position, yes. Mm -hmm. If that maybe this, but I'm not sure. Uh-huh, me too. I mean, neither. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about job tenure, but we are not sure. <laughs> All right, okay. We think that it is to have a, a job for a very long time. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> but guessing. 
That's oh, what it is. It. Yeah, that's what it is. Exactly, oh. that's what it is. So it's the opposite of job hoppers. The job oh. hopper is like a, it's like I, I think the helper in in Spanish is a trampoline. Like a saltarín, kind of. Mm. No. All right. Mm. Remember to hop is to, to 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 jump. All right. Kind of mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. So it you go. Like, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Go go ahead, Diana. It's it's to have a a job position only to for a year or something like that. Right. To, yeah. Only to have the experience <laughs> <laughs> to search for another position. Right. In, yes. In the next year. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right, Diana. Is that your cut? Yes, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Dianita. Yeah, because I, I remember. <laughs> I, I heard the loud noise. I'm thinking, but Diana says that she lives alone. Is that the cat? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I have to think that they are my cats. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I live <It's> better. <laughs> I know, Dianita. You live alone. Yes, it's better. <laughs> yes, and the funeral home was in here. Some uh, some years ago. I know the answer. Yeah. Mysterious. Yes. I know. Me muero, se lo juro. I know it's creepy, baby. It is. It is I mean, if you. That way, it is very creepy. <laughs> yes. Diana, have you ever had like those experiences, weird experiences, or never? Is that a stereotype? No, it it it, it is. I have I. Personally, have had no way. The, I know the, those kind of experience. <laughs> oh no! Yes, really, Diana. <laughs> yes, and, in, and in this house, in fact, in this house, in fact, we see. I, I, I know. I maybe some noise or, or to see stuff. Really? Yes, yes. It is a really creepy house. <laughs> Diana, how do you survive by yourself? I would be dying alone. <laughs> yeah, that's why I have two cats. Oh, well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wouldn't be able to, Diana. I'm sorry. I wouldn't. <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of. I yeah. Don't know. It's weird. What about in the funeral home? Like now that it's not in your house, have you ever um, had like strange no, things? Uh, no, when when the, in the place that the funeral home is is right now, it's not creepy at all. No. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So yeah. I think it is the place. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> it's the house or something like that. <laughs> Oh my, is that, the, but that's not the house where you grew up. Yes, I, I grew up in this house. Oh, in fact, the, the, the things that I saw were the, when I was a child. Oh, and not when I was an adult. So oh, maybe. really? Mm -hmm. Oh my, and God. you remember. Yes, that it who, was really who cool. wouldn't, Andreita? I would. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. What about you, Andrea? Have you ever suffered? It? Like, have you ever like gone through some experiences like that? Not really. No. But I, in my room, uh, I sleep with my sisters. Okay. And I like never be alone alone, I think. Because ah. we are five. Prior siblings. Wow, really, Andre? Yes. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, no kidding. You know what? I've always wanted to have a big family, but I go crazy with three children, really. I don't know how people manage with more than three. Sometimes I don't know how my parents <laughs> do it. <laughs> Sometimes I, I I feel like I'm like right. Right, like one more thing and I'll go crazy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can you manage? I, uh, in the past, I said that I want like four or five children. Uh -huh. but now, I don't know. Not Maybe even. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. But no more. No more. <laughs> yeah. And then, I think there are, well, I heard of my uh, co-workers mm -hmm. like always saying like, 
the my child is consum consumes uh, too many time and are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Children is very expensive. Yeah. It's child are very expensive. Yes. They are yeah. they are your piggy banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that is that's another characteristic of this generation. Probably. That millennials don't want. I think that millennials really don't have to have many children. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe one yeah. or two. And maybe one or two, that's right, yeah. Uh -huh. Like on the and the past generations was the opposite. You know, they were having the lots age. and lots and lots of kids. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh -huh. But if you notice now, I think that's that 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 is what's very interesting if you like really like study about generations because like you got like the millennials like i'm all, i i guess i do consider myself in a way a millennial but it's like the the generation before my generation and even my generation is like now both parents they have to go to work before it was only one of the parents going to work mm -hmm. all right and the mom mm -hmm. usually stayed at home and raised 10 kids 12 kids seven kids you know mm -hmm. But as generations moved on, it was like more difficult just to like be able to sustain the house just with one parent working. All right. So that's quite interesting, you know, because that has changed a lot. And now generation, like people say the millennial generation and everything, they are self-entitled and they think they deserve everything and all that. And they are self-centered. But and, and this is what Diana was saying yesterday. It's like what we the relationship that we have with ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right, because and that's very important. That's something that my generation, even my generation that is so close to yours, is was not really thinking because we try to do everything for others, not for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and there is something that right now it's bothering me a lot because to be honest, you know, I, I spend so much time in front of the computer doing everything like for my job, all right. And I was yesterday, I was actually telling my husband while we were having supper and I said, you know what, I really need to do something for me because mm -hmm. I'm in front of the computer working and I enjoy it. But sometimes it's like, okay, but what, what, what am I doing for me, Jessica, you know, mm -hmm. and it's something that you guys do because you are like on your thirties already. All right. But you're not thinking, I mean, I don't know if you are, but what I'm saying is you don't have a family right now. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do is for your own, for your own, for your own self, you know, learning English or practicing your English, just like Andrea. All right. So it's like, that's cool, you know, because I didn't do that. You know, I have done things for the family, not for Jessica. That's a difference between generations. You know, and my mm -hmm. and the generation like before mine, it's even worse. I mean, they they never <laughs> thought of anything possible of doing something mm -hmm. like that. You know, so that's kind of cool if you study generations. It's quite interesting. <laughs> yes, it's true. I think that we work for living, right? And we know we don't live for work, <laughs> right? I know mm -hmm. that's it's so important. true. Yeah, it is. It is it so is important. important. It, it yeah. is important. Because I, I think that we enjoy our jobs, but we are not living for, for right. For jobs. Yeah, you know, I, and this is what I was telling you, like before when we were in the in the main group. Is like I have been offered full time jobs for so many times and for so long, but I always say no. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't see myself there being stuck eight hours, ten hours in an office. No, that's not for me. I really need to be out there. I think I have now that I now, now that I think about it and to be honest I think I have thought this way because of my family because remember I have three kids right and I always say well if I'm stuck in an office who's going to take Alejandro to his swimming classes who's going to take the girls to it's their ballet really classes cool. all right yeah nobody would all right so I have like directed that feeling because of my children but if I think about it, it's also because I don't like to be stuck in an office. No, that's not for me. <laughs> I would go crazy, I swear. Yeah. So, so, I mean, having, I mean, being able to move around and, you know, see the daylight and, <laughs> and kind of like, you know, but it's, it's true because look at a university schedule, for example. I have friends 
but they have full-time jobs. So they start work at eight and they finish mm -hmm. at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Every, single Every single day. day. No, yes. that's yes. not for me. Yes. <laughs> no, no way, way. <laughs> not in a million years. And and you know what? Some people have asked yeah. me, but what about stability? Because sometimes working for hours, sometimes you like you you do ends meet, you know, because sometimes when the cyclo is over, you're left without a job. But you manage to work like that and you manage to live like that, and then you know that you have to save money. Uh, like mm -hmm. little by little but you have to like work somehow but yeah Do a plan. yeah you have to have because mm -hmm. i don't want to work it's because this is my lifestyle all right mm -hmm. and and i like it and i have worked for it and i know the consequences so i i work for the consequences mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but for some people for my mom for example she's like no hija, but you have to get a job you know mom i have a job yeah but uh, another job like, another my job <laughs> <laughs> so it's quite interesting you know yeah cool i like that right so mm -hmm. andrea in your case are you a job hopper you think or not well i in my you know in the company that i work now i um i work uh, there for four years okay in the same company. In the same company. Mm -hmm. I think that I that I, I like the company, but mm -hmm. I um, I heard about some uh, ex classmates mm -hmm. for the university, mm -hmm. my colleagues, that they are like oh, really? the job, no, job and job, job and job. Right. Yeah. They're job hoppers. <laughs> uh huh. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But but no, I think that I know. Uh, right okay what about like all right thing. yeah yes. all right what about diana before you started your own business because it's different now mm -hmm. do you consider yourself being a job hopper yes i was a job hopper oh really yes yes because my first job when be, be, after i graduated from college uh -huh. it, it was uh only to to get experience mm -hmm. and it was like uh, hoping to have another another job position in another place right mm -hmm. yeah, and in fact i was uh, at the end of my career in that company mm -hmm. i quit to another oh. to another to All be right. working in another company that it right. was offering me a, a, a better salary right. and, and everything yes. okay all right okay very good. Now, um, a, a, well, in the case of Diana, it's different because she owns her own business. But in the case of Andrea, do you see yourself working in that company for um, like much longer or not really? Mm, mm, I think that, yes, but, but I like, I, uh, I, in this day, I was thinking of it. Like okay. if I want to apply for another company or no. Mm. But the company that I, that I work, it's a, it's very cool. My okay. boss is very cool, and I think that I can grow in the All right. company. All right, okay. And like I am like an afraid of applying for another job. Right, okay. <laughs> because I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure that I want to leave or no. Right, and okay. I think that I can stay in, in the company. Okay, very nice. Interesting. I, I like the the. The technology company, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the people, and the like, the philosophy of the company. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do also, right? Because if you like the company, the environment is good, the work environment is nice, the boss is nice, then you kind of think, why would I leave? You know. <laughs> and you still think that you still like. At I mean, you can. Uh huh. For more money. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> a really yeah. good offer. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. Then you have to think it twice, right? But yeah, you know, and also like all the uh, benefits, if you have any, you know, that you, you have to take that into account as well. All yes, right. uh, the, the last week, the company sent to my home to a, a, a few um, co workers, sent a, a pizza and mm. a, a, a oh. bottle of wine. <laughs> oh my goodness! Hey, thanks for for your job and your dedication. It's very cool. Yeah, oh. yeah. that's nice. That's very very. <laughs> that's sweet. nice. Yeah, it is very nice. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah, I think we all like that, that feeling, you know, of being prized and being valued. Because sometimes, and I think that's what happens also with parents, right? They always tell us the bad things we do, but they never tell us the good things we do. And it's not that we need, like, you know, an, a, you know, a prize for every single thing you do, but once in a while it's nice, you know, because it mm -hmm. makes you feel important. And we're humans and we have feelings, you know, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, we need to feel valued. That's quite interesting. Very yes. nice, Andrea. <laughs> cool. All right, girls. So, uh, you have not been able to do the questions because I was talking too much. <laughs> so you work on it and I'll go. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll go My to another group. Thank All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Here are the questions. Okay. And um, what is the meaning of job hop? Uh, if you want to move, you have to work for that. You have to study at night or maybe on, on your days off and make a, any small contribution every day on learning everything new, everything new in order to, to move from one job to another. From, from, from one job to another. You have to evolve, evolve. Right? You do. I have had many, many jobs. I was almost becoming a, a job hopper oh I my thought, goodness really oscar i thought i would be a job hopper forever but i found so, <laughs> so mr all right uh -huh. how long how long did you say that you've been at your work for 16 years wow you're not a job hopper come on oscar <laughs> no but before that before. i was i was moving from job to job but yeah, I'm there. I, I'm telling Moises I'm here because I love the, I'm on that job because I love the job. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, a, a stable job. Right. I don't know. They have a good stability, job stability. Right. Job stability. But the payment is is uh, steady. It's like a, it's, mm -hmm. it's the government. I, I said already that this, this is like a, a little bit uh, higher than the, the call centers. All just right. a little bit higher than the call centers right but uh, if i don't see so clear the, the there's not a career path okay because uh, there are few we have only two airports right and there are only maybe we are 45 controllers in El Salvador, active controllers wow so if you want to move to to the next step the next step is the radar okay so someone someone has to die in the radar i mean <laughs> because they are they are old <laughs> they are old but but they, they we are we have only one radar for, for the whole south i mean wow. only workstation actually right. there are there are two radar here many radars and okay. the data the data is unified in one okay but the workstation it's only one only one only one room in the south Wow. Two towers, two towers, and one radar in El Salvador. Right. So there's no chance. Uh, there are few. There are few possibilities to to move up. To climb. Uh, to mm -hmm. move up. Uh huh. And I'm here because I like the job and because of the job uh, stability. Right. But what would I say in a in a job interview? And they tell me, "What were you doing 15 or 16 years in the same?" in the same, uh, the position. same uh, position did you did you continue studying something or did you mm -hmm. um, ambition anything i mean i mean this this is i'm stuck there i, I recognize but i try to, to renew myself i was telling right. to moises that we have to to learn something new always, yeah always. that's right mm -hmm. that's right yeah what about Moises? Uh, are you a job hopper, Moy? No, teacher. I'm not because I have uh, 14 years working at the, at the same place. Okay. Yes. Uh, like I said, I like the, the job that I, that I do, the things that I do. Mm -hmm. I like to uh, communicate with other people. So I, I am in the in the in a perfect in a perfect job right okay very nice 
So, okay. do you like what you do, Moises? Yes, of course. Wow. Yes. Very Moises. good. All right. Very good. I'm a job hopper. I just uh, before this this job, Moises, I I was moving from job to job and looking for something better, something meaningful. I would say. And you find uh, it. Well, I I I'm to tell the truth uh, for my family and for my my family stability. <laughs> I am um, 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 I'm here and I'm keeping the job. I'm keeping the job, the job. But I will uh, sometime. I will be sometime later. I would like to to move and do something different. I mean, uh, not not so steady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so steady all right very good interesting all right very good finish the other questions moises and and uh oscar we were speaking about the job tenure this is kind of difficult because I uh, what do you think it is what do you guys think, think it is like a tenuria del trabajo in spanish uh-huh which in which means how how long do you stay in a in a job but moises knows better go ahead moises uh-huh moi no, it's a period, it's a period of the time that you, you have in the company that you work. Okay. This is job tenure. All right. Yes. Any, okay, very good. Hmm. So, Oscar, what do you think? I think this is a, it's a, the long you stay, I mean, the, the job tenure is the, the time that you spend in a job, the long or the average mm -hmm. that a worker uh, spend in a, in a job. And uh, is, is what is good, uh, what is good job tenure is the longer the better. Okay. But in case, but if, you, if the company, for me, if the company have a clear career okay. path, All right. career path, uh, the longer is the better on job tenure. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Very good. Uh, Excellent. All right. Very good. I think we're gonna go back and we're gonna share the um, the uh, the finishings and everything else that you guys talked about. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. How teacher. can I know? Oh, okay. Who's sharing the screen right now, guys? I cannot. Moses is sharing. No me puedo salir, no, ya me salí, no se preocupe, ya, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, very good. So here we have... Let me just check it here. All right, so job hoppers, all right? So let's talk about the definitions. What are job hoppers, guys? How do you define that? All right, guys, who can, def uh, Williams, let, let, let me hear about what is job hopper for you? <laughs> we are trying to guess about. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, we think is when someone have a different jobs in a short period of time. Okay. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Very good. <laughs> That's what it is. All right. Any other ideas, guys, about job hoppers? Silvita, what do you think? What is a what is a job hopper, Silvia? Uh, <laughs> well, I was working with uh, Vero and Cruz. Okay. We have some doubts about this meaning, the job hoppers, but we talk about the, the people that change the world. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe work in some times, in, in some, a little space of time. Okay. Uh, after change the work, okay, 
we think we think is is depend the circumstances maybe uh, there are people that change the world because don't like to work or there are an, some reason uh, a strong reason to change okay all right but another people change be, maybe because the, the 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 kind of work there are some work that working projects mm -hmm. or or how mm -hmm. do you say interinatus internships internships yeah maybe cover other other place Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you work for temporadas? How yeah, like, like seasons? Seasons. It depends right. the, the circumstances. All right, okay, all right, very good. Anybody else? Okay, miss, I, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> yes, yes, okay, Jesse. Uh, I, I think in the job hopper with the people are to, I work in one institute for about two or five years. Mm -hmm no more time mm -hmm. and then the people decide decide to change the job to change the job mm -hmm. and go to another business but for different guys kinds of, of difficulties can be or for improve the personal life because in some cases they apply for another job in another business and they can outside the and they decide to change the, the job that they have okay. for improve the, the life that they have okay. in some cases. But in the most, but in the, in the most, what? I don't know. I love the your the word. <laughs> <laughs> but the people change the job because they feel so frustrated inside a job oh, in okay. some of ways because the people the millennials when <laughs> i'm working with the other people okay. they don't have don't feel in confidence with the people oh, and right. they don't and they don't obtain to stay inside the business okay. and have good feeling with the co-workers and that's the reason that people change the work and, and go to the, another place that they had the same uh, form of thinking in some cases. All right. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So I'm going to show you guys what job hopper means. All right. And it's not, I mean, it's not very difficult to like understand it. It's right. Whoops. It's right here. It's the practice of changing your job very often. All right. And this is one of the stereotypes that millennials have. People believe or people think that millennials are job hoppers. That means that they change from jobs, because, not because um, they get fired, they want to change jobs because they want to get uh, another job position. So they don't last long on their jobs, maybe not even the year, maybe a little bit about the year, maybe like right on the year. So they are changing, constantly changing jobs very often and the other one with job tenure is the opposite the length of time an employee has worked for their employees all right so for example in this case oscar he was telling us uh we were working with moises right oscar and he has been working at the same company for the last 16 years all right so now we can say that oscar is a job tenure because he has worked there for so long for 16 years he said that before that, he considered himself being a job hopper, all right? Although he's not a millennial. So this is what I'm telling you, all right? So these are stereotypes. Millennials have it, but that doesn't mean that they are the only ones that can be like that, all right? It's a big stereotype. People think that millennials are like job hoppers, all right? They are not job tenures. And they, um, they are always changing on everything and they are not steady, all right? What about the last one? What about boost? What is boost, guys? Anybody? What is boost? What did you come up with that one? Anybody? I I don't sure, but when Oof. the people <laughs> is when the people increasing your job turner in one business. Mm, okay. 
All right. I think that. <laughs> All right. Very good. Diana and Andrea, what did you come up with? We didn't talk about that. Oh, you didn't talk about the last one. All right, that's okay. <laughs> All right, that's okay. All right. What about uh, Oscar or anybody else? Eh, or Jennifer or Ellie, Nuvia? What about uh, Boost? Nobody came up with that definition of Boost. What happened, guys? You didn't see it? That's okay. <laughs> uh huh. Nobody? All right, so boost is not that very difficult. It's right here. Oops, no, no, that, that's for me. It, sell, it says the boost is to help or encourage something or someone to increase or improve, to boost it up, to boost your self-esteem, to get higher, a higher self-esteem, all right? To be like encouraged to go up or to increase, that's to boost, all right? So guys, we're gonna watch a, a video. The video I'm gonna be like presenting to you talks about the stereotypes that we have mentioned before, like from yesterday and today, like some of the negative characteristics millennials have, not because they think they are like that, but because people think they are like that, all right? So it's a, an interview actually with two types of millennials. One of them, is, one group is older, millennial, but older, and the other group is millennial, but younger, all right? So uh, there's this lady interviewing them and asking them what they think about the stereotypes or, or the ideas that people have about them. So I want you to pay attention to that video. It's like about six minutes or so. So let's, let's pay attention to it. It's good because you practice your listening, all right? And I want you guys to like pay attention to different kinds of accents and different types of speed when they are speaking and everything. So that's quite interesting. Let me just go get it for you. So um, we have it here. Uh, it's this one. Hold on, hold on. just give me a second, guys. Did I lose it? No, I won't say that. I'm talking to myself, guys. Oh no, it's this one. Always. No, that's not true, Williams. Be nice to me. <laughs> I found it, Williams. Be nice. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> All right, very good. He's terrible, eh? All right, so I'm gonna share my computer sound. Take notes if you feel you need to, guys, because I'm gonna be asking questions about it. So the idea is for you to like pay attention concentrate on what they're saying, try to take notes, and of course, try to understand everything they say, okay? We're partnering with digital media company Refinery29 this morning for a new series about millennials called My Generation. They're people who were born between the early 80s and mid 90s. They make up the largest living generation bigger than baby boomers and Generation X. Their money, their attention, and their votes are all in big demand. Identifying millennials is complicated by a divide within the generation. Their formative years were split by the financial crisis, smartphones, and social media. Biana Goladriga met some millennials to get their reactions to stereotypes about them. Biana, good morning. Oh, Nora, I felt so old talking to this group of kids. We brought together a group. They're not kids, actually. They're adults, and they're a group from across the country featuring three millennials, age 30 to 34, and three younger millennials, ages 23 to 27. We met them at the New York City Bar Porchlight to learn what unites and what divides them. There are a lot of stereotypes, some are true, maybe some not so true, about what people say about millennials. I'm going to ask you if you agree or disagree. Millennials are entitled. I agree with that. Yes, agree. definitely agree. Why do you agree? I think we've been conditioned to get used to being comfortable with things coming to us quickly, things being more convenient for us, um, getting things quicker. Well, you led me into my next question. Millennials are lazy. No, I don't agree with that. I, don't agree. I, don't I disagree. No. I disagree with that. I work a full-time job, and then I come home, and then I run a business. That's so. why I think that we're not entitled, is because of that entrepreneurial spirit that Correct. millennials have. But I think we're one of the hardest working generations because of the country that was left to us. We have to be. 
because our generation, and maybe this is also part of the millennial divide, um, the younger millennials came into the workforce with more knowledge and expertise in technology and social media. Right. And so they're coming in and thinking like, I deserve more, I deserve more faster. Did you enter the job market before or after the financial crisis? I went after. before. Before? After. 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 Okay. And, and how would you say it has impacted your view on your financial situation and your career? It has made me extremely driven uh, because when I first entered the workforce, there were very limited jobs. And so I was competing for jobs with um, older men, like 45 years old. I was wow. in interviews with them. I also think that that is um, the difference between that maybe entitlement piece that we're talking about because, and I don't fault the younger millennials for that, they're seeing, you know, 30 year old men being CEOs and super successful and getting billions right. of dollars. And so I think that's what they expect. How many of you still live with your parents or depend on your parents for financial help? I live, I live with my parents, but I don't depend on them. Yeah, same. You don't depend on your parents, but you live at their house. How does that work? So I pay all my own bills, yeah. but I live with them. Yes. Let's move on. Uh, millennials are overly sensitive and need praise. Now that's really hurtful for you to say. I... <laughs> <laughs> you need a tissue? Should we take a moment? That's very aggressive. Does everyone feel like they need a trophy? I think it's more of a, a respect thing. I think, yeah. I think that a lot of what we do isn't, taken in, isn't respected. You know, I think that there's a disconnect with previous generations and us that there's not a respect for the, the skills that we do on a regular basis that they can't. Doing a job doesn't necessarily deserve a pat on the back. I mean, you have a job to do and you did it. There's, it's not like a congratulations, you did it. Mm -hmm. You just did it. Are you more likely to text or email with somebody or actually talk to them on the phone? Mm, probably text. Probably text. I talk. It's, it's rude and intrusive to call someone, right? <laughs> it's rude to call somebody? I think that it, it can be, like, depending on what you're calling for. For example, like, I work in a sales job. If I call someone, I feel like they are more annoyed with me than if they can just respond to a text on their own time. What is your overall perception on younger millennials? I think overall younger millennials are very intelligent. I think they are very entrepreneurial. I think that they are entitled, but I don't necessarily believe that that is a bad thing in all cases. I think younger millennials had it a little harder than us in terms of the constant pressure and comparison from having social media all the time. Um, but I think the challenge is going to be to kind of get better at listening in addition to sort of projecting and, and personally branding. Okay, and let me ask the younger millennials what your overall perception of your older peers are. They have a lot of the qualities that we have and they have a lot of the qualities that the older generation has. So we can glean a lot from them because of that. I mean, I, I agree completely. You guys were like the transitional right. ge you know, generation or phase and you guys are kind of spearheading, spearheading our old generation as a whole. So we're just falling breadcrumbs, so <laughs> lay the bricks. <laughs> Pressure. Luke was like our sleeper old soul among the group, <laughs> while millennials are arguably more ambitious, educated, and informed than generations before them. There is a perception that they are not in a rush to settle professionally. That of course can lead to the misperception of being lazy and entitled, one of the questions I obviously mm -hmm. asked. Them. Yeah, Diana, thank you. Amy Emmerich is Chief Content Officer at Refinery29 is also with us now. Amy, good morning. You guys do a great job. Mm -hmm. So many millennials love yeah. your site and you really sort of capture the zeitgeist, all cultural, political issues. Where do you think some of these misperceptions come about millennials? I mean, I think the millennial became a bad word for a hot second because people believed that they were lazy and entitled, but the laziness is really more about self-care. They may not be in an office from eight to eight, but they are much more about involvement, right? How can they be better with a work-life balance? Mm -hmm. And I think the entitlement comes with maybe a little, but it's about entitled to be seen and heard. And I think that's where they're really kind of pushing the idea of representation across mm -hmm. media and other, other landscapes. They're, dri they're driven by larger concerns than personal concerns? Yes. Absolutely. But, you know, this generation is the, one of the most financially literate of many, many generations. But the older set of millennials are much more focused on that long-term planning, 
home ownership mm -hmm. career, while the younger set is much more about experiences, living in the now. How do I bottle up the now mm -hmm. and really drive with my passions? Yeah. I, I agree with Nora about what Refinery29 does. It's not just for millennials. I think if you want to know what's going on with the younger generation, read your website. Yeah. What do you think that they're concerned about that other generations are not that stands out for you? I think the societal norms and breaking those down. They grew up with social media. They are allowed to say that what is motherhood, career, relationships is not the way that the generations before wrote those rules. So they're rewriting them across the board. Um, and I think that until that they feel it fits more of who they are, they expect us to all operate with more of a moral value and compass mm -hmm. than businesses before. Um, and until they succeed in that, they won't stop pushing. They change oh, society? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. How so? Yeah. They create culture. Yeah. I mean, every day through social media, they're doing it faster, they consume it faster and create more than any generation and before And their that. own yeah. personal brands, I found, are very important to them. Absolutely. And you and I talked about Thank this, the yes. difference in previous generations. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know the personal so brand thing is always baffling to me because I just think you work and do a good job. And I hear so many millennials saying, I'm working on my brand. All right, Amy and Mark, thank you so much. All right. Was it difficult to understand? Hello. A little. Uh, a little? All right. A for little. Me, yes. Yeah? It's difficult for me, teacher. Yeah, I know. All right. Very good. Me too. Yeah, do you want to listen to it again and see what you guys can get from it? Yes. All right. Yes, teacher. Of course. Hold on, just give me a second here. Oops, 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 oops. You see, I'm not a millennial, so wait. <laughs> you need to wait. Hold on, guys. There's another video that was quite funny. I'm going to show it to you tomorrow, actually. But this one, if you notice, there are two groups of millennials talking here, all right? And even within their own generation, they are different because one of them, some of them are older and some of them are younger. So the younger yeah. millennial you are, the more techie savvy you become. All right, and everybody says, oh, you're only always on social media. Well, yeah, they were born like that. <laughs> they were born through Facebook, all right? And they were born like using all those apps and stuff. So that's quite interesting. All right, pay attention. <laughs> partnering with digital media company Refinery29 this morning for a new series about millennials called My Generation. They're people who were born between the early 80s and mid 90s. They make up the largest living generation bigger than baby boomers and Generation X. Their money, their attention and their votes are all in big demand. Identifying millennials is complicated by a divide within the generation. Their formative years were split by the financial crisis, smartphones and social media. Biana Goladriga met some millennials to get their reactions to stereotypes about them. Biana, good morning. Oh, Nora, I felt so old talking to this group <laughs> of kids. We brought together a group. They're not kids, actually. They're adults, and they're a group from across the country featuring three millennials, age 30 to 34, and three younger millennials, ages 23 to 27. We met them at the New York City Bar Porchlight to learn what unites and what divides them. There are a lot of stereotypes, some are true, maybe some not so true, about what people say about millennials. I'm going to ask you if you agree or disagree. Millennials are entitled. I agree with that. Yes, I agree. definitely agree. Why do you agree? I think we've been conditioned to get used to being comfortable with things coming to us quickly, things being more convenient for us, um, getting things quicker. Well, you led me into my next question. Millennials are lazy. No, I don't agree with that. I, don't agree. I, don't I disagree. No. I disagree with that. I work a full-time job, and then I come home, and then I run a business. That's so. why I think that we're not entitled, is because of that entrepreneurial spirit that Correct. millennials have. But I think we're one of the hardest working generations because of the country that was left to us. We have to be. Because our generation, and maybe this is also part of the millennial divide, um, the younger millennials came into the workforce with more knowledge and expertise in technology and social media. And so they're coming in and thinking like, I deserve more. I deserve more faster. Did you enter the job market before or after the financial crisis? I after. 
before? After. 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 Okay. And and how would you say it has impacted your view on your financial situation and your career? It has made me extremely driven uh, because when I first entered the workforce, there were very limited jobs, and so I was competing for jobs with um, older men, like 45 years old. I was in interviews with them. I also think that that is um, the difference between that maybe entitlement piece that we're talking about because, and I don't fault the younger millennials for that, they're seeing, you know, 30-year-old men being CEOs and super successful and getting billions of dollars. And so I think that's what they expect. How many of you still live with your parents or depend on your parents for financial help? I live, I live with my parents, but I don't depend on them. Yeah, same. You don't depend on your parents, but you live at their house. How does that work? So I pay all my own bills, yeah. but I live with them. Yes. Let's move on. Uh, millennials are overly sensitive and need praise. Now that's really hurtful for you to say. I... <laughs> <laughs> you need a tissue? <laughs> Should we take a moment? That's very aggressive. Uh, does everyone feel like they need a trophy? Mm -hmm. I think it's more of a trophy. respect thing. I think, yeah. I think that a lot of what we do isn't, taken in, isn't respected. You know, I think that there's a disconnect with previous generations and us that there's not a respect for the, the skills that we do on a regular basis that they can't. Doing a job doesn't necessarily deserve a pat on the back. I mean, you have a job to do and you did it. There's, it's not like a congratulations, you did it. Mm. You just did it. Are you more likely to text or email with somebody or actually talk to them on the phone? Mm, probably text. Probably text. I, I talk. It's, it's rude and intrusive to call someone, right? <laughs> like, it's rude to call somebody? I think that it, it can be, like, depending on what you're calling for. For example, like, I work in a sales job. If I call someone, I feel like they are more annoyed with me than if they can just respond to a text on their own time. What is your overall perception on younger millennials? I think overall younger millennials are very intelligent. I think they are very entrepreneurial. I think that they are entitled, but I don't necessarily believe that that is a bad thing in all cases. I think younger millennials had it a little harder than us in terms of the constant pressure and comparison from having social media all the time. Um, but I think the challenge is going to be to kind of get better at listening in addition to sort of projecting and, and personally branding. Okay, and let me ask the younger millennials what your overall perception of your older peers are. They have a lot of the qualities that we have, and they have a lot of the qualities that the older generation has. So we can glean a lot from them because of that. I mean, I, I agree completely. You guys were like the transitional right. ge you know, generation or phase, and you guys are kind of spearheading, spearheading our whole generation as a whole. So we're just falling breadcrumbs, so <laughs> lay the bricks. <laughs> Pressure. Luke was like our sleeper old soul among the group. <laughs> While millennials are arguably more ambitious, educated, and informed than generations before them, there is a perception that they are not in a rush to settle professionally. That, of course, can lead to the misperception of being lazy and entitled. One of the questions I obviously mm -hmm. asked. Them. Yeah, Diana, thank you. Amy Emmerich is chief content officer at Refinery29 is also with us now. Amy, good morning. You guys do a great job. Mm -hmm. So many millennials love yeah. your site and you really sort of capture the zeitgeist, all cultural, political issues. Where do you think some of these misperceptions come about millennials? I mean, I think the millennial became a bad word for a hot second because people believe that they were lazy and entitled, but the laziness is really more about self-care. They may not be in an office from eight to eight, but they are much more about involvement, right? How can they be better with a work-life balance? Mm -hmm. And I think the entitlement comes with maybe a little, but it's about entitled to be seen and heard. And I think that's where they're really kind of pushing the idea of representation across mm -hmm. media and other, other landscapes. They're, dri they're driven by larger concerns than personal concerns? Yes. Absolutely. But, you know, this generation is the, one of the most financially literate of many, many generations. But the older set of millennials are much more focused on that long term planning, home ownership, mm -hmm. career, while the younger set is much more about experiences, living in the now. How do I bottle up the now mm -hmm. and really drive with my passions? I, I agree with Nora about what Refinery29 does. It's not just for millennials. I think if you want to know what's going on with the younger generation, read your website. Yeah. What do you think that they're concerned about that other generations are not? that stands out for you? I think the societal norms and breaking those down. They grew up with social media. They are allowed to say that what is motherhood, career, relationships is not the way that 
the generations before wrote those rules. So they're rewriting them across the board. Um, and I think that until that they feel it fits more of who they are, they expect us to all operate with more of a moral value and compass mm -hmm. than businesses before. Um, and until they succeed in that, they won't stop pushing. They change oh, society. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Also, yeah. they create culture. Yeah. I mean, every day through social media, they're doing it faster. They consume it faster and create more than any generation. And their own yeah. personal brands, I found, are very important to them. Absolutely. And you and I talked about Thank this. You. The yes. difference in previous generations. Yeah. 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 I, I know the personal so brand thing is always baffling to me because I just think you work and do a good job. And I hear so many millennials saying, "I'm working on my brand." All right, Amy and Mark. Thank you so much. All right, guys. So, tell me what you heard from the video. So we saw two types of millennials: the older, the older group, and the younger group. Uh huh. So tell me about it. Um, the, the um, I don't not remember. I not remember the presentador. Um, All right. The, sorry? Uh-huh, go ahead, go ahead. The girl that was asking questions, uh-huh, uh -huh, the interviewer. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, they they uh, answer the questions, the, the both of the, the, the millennials, mm -hmm. the young and the, and the, um, and the older. Right. Uh, yes, but they, they asked the question about the, um, they are uh, anti threat and both as, uh, both uh, said yes. Um, and after they, uh, they have, they uh, do a question about the, what is the reasons mm -hmm. and they they say um for example the older they says that they um, uh, talk about the social media but not only this the, the business politics and they are raising people and, and for example the the older are uh, very clean Okay. And the youngest, and the youngest is, um, is uh, not as clean, but it's, it's a different, uh, different manners uh, to the, to the person, uh, the, uh, the city, the, 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 the world life. Mm -hmm. And for example, uh, the the youngest prefer uh, working or business or uh, working in 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 their home mm -hmm. sometimes, and they they do the do the questions about the, the if uh, they depends the they families to the families uh, on their parents on their parents yes on their parents and some of them say yes and some no mm -hmm. but they they um they 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 have a a good uh a good um uh, I don't I don't remember uh air air a good money mm -hmm. uh a lot of money air a lot of money in in the work in the job and the oldest too okay and the oldest too um let me see um uh, the the end of the they 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 um, they uh, to the question about if they they are uh, lazy mm -hmm. but 
uh, answer no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both group. Lazy no because uh, they uh, today uh, uh, um, let me see. They uh, they uh, like uh, they like uh, uh, air uh, money in their okay. business mm -hmm. and they are interactive. And they ha they should be interactive and they uh, 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 they uh, show uh, um, a good uh, opportunities okay and really not not uh, really not um, like uh, I is Say like you in the same world mm -hmm. in the in the in the in the um a one uh, day or I think yeah schedules mm -hmm. mm -hmm. in the in the companies but yes all right yeah uh, okay. all the all them prefer uh prefer uh, for independent independence work all right okay. independence uh, business all right yes okay all right and cool. they had okay um, just like that all right very good thank you jenny all right anybody else about Did what you, you yes okay uh, um, i thinking about the video and they are talking about millennials, but millennials are not are more convenient than another generations, and they are not lazy. And the other hand, the younger millennials are not have more knowledge, and they are experts in social media, yes. and they have more mm -hmm. more experience than a, a millennials. The Younger millennials are very intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have cooperation with another people because they have a knowledge that that uh, older millennials don't have. And that that generation has a lot of qualities that don't have another generation. Okay. And the uh, younger generation have quality that had another generation too. Okay. For example, the younger gen generation mm -hmm. has some qualities about that of time, the generation X. All right. And that generation is named to generation Y because had a lot of knowledge about technology, social media. And in the other hand, that the younger generation have less Priorities. Okay. And in, in that is in that they had about five or six steps in life priorities that are set a finance goals and save money. And okay. they had first okay. passion and interest and that kind of things. All right. They had two goals in the life. And what goals can be graduate from the college and the, the university too. Okay. And that's kind of people have more of a parent home. They are easy, easier to take decision and go mm -hmm. for another places. Okay. And right. they don't think about another other people are thinking about they. They no, they don't matter the thinking of the people. They All are right. acting free people. All right. Okay. And, and the last one they are get a real job okay. but when they want to want to work they work good okay they make the things very well All right. but when they don't want to work <laughs> do that all right okay interesting very good thank you desi very good all right let's see anybody else oscar Tell us what happened, Oscar, on that video. 
well I saw the younger millennials and older millennials and the, the olders were uh, they grew up uh, after the the economical crisis yes i couldn't get i couldn't get uh, what time what what crisis i can't what remember time. Uh -huh. does anybody know when was the crisis i think that they are talking about the, the crisis in 2008 yeah all right maybe 2008 uh-huh because it wasn't clear for me that but the, uh, they say the, the younger millennials the younger millennial was saying that the older millennials were like a trans transitional a guys. transition yeah uh -huh. they were like a transition and they were not so good at tech like like they were i mean right the transitionals have some some qualities of the ex generation right the, the generation, generation. Because millennia, huh? <laughs> our the, generation of Carito. and they as millennia, they are they were the the spearhead mm -hmm. spearhead for the millennials all right and what else but they were talking only something to say like generalities they didn't, right yeah they didn't ground any any line of of of, uh, of a topic or a, right yeah i mean the girl a, was uh -huh. just asking them like about you know the stereotypes that people believe millennials are like lazy self-entitled all right uh -huh. you know like they don't like to work as much how do they see themselves so it was actually interesting to see that even though they are millennials both groups were millennials the uh -huh. younger ones have a different the older millennials and the older millennials had a different point of view of the younger millennials and of course there's a difference all right if you notice for example if we take that uh point that diana was saying that for the 2008 uh cri economical crisis the younger millennials were not working yet because they were still too young all right remember that in the states you're allowed to work when you're 16 and up all right so the, but they were younger than that while as the uh, older millennials they already had jobs and everything all right so again they feel like people misunderstand them because they want things and as oscar was saying the other day they kind of uh, stand for their rights okay no i'm not gonna work so many hours because i can get the job done faster for example all right or i can do it from home for instance all right so those kind of things people stereotype them because uh, the previous generation and the previous generation before the X generation, they were stuck at eight hours, 10 hours every day. So they, they don't see how someone is going to say, no, I'm just going to work for four hours. No, you know what? I'm working from home. All right. So those things are very difficult for generations to accept. All right. The last lady on the video, the one that had like the hair kind of funny. <laughs> all right. She has this like, um, organization i guess from uh, millennials all right and she's saying the thing is like people are not really understanding millennials all right because they are like a new trend and they everything they do is through apps and through phones and through technology all right so it's very hard there's another video i'm gonna play to you like for you tomorrow there's this lady saying you know what every generation has been judged by the previous generation and i think that's so true all right, because for like the baby boomers, all right, which is like a, a generation before ours, they judged the generation X, you know, because they were people, all right? And we, generation X, we judge uh, millennials. And I guess after millennials, there's another generation, all right? And this is a chain, you know, it keeps on changing as we go, all right? So, but right now, because uh, we're talking about millennials, of course, those are the the most common stereotypes are the ones that we've been talking about, lazy, self-entitled, job hoppers, they jump from one job to another, they don't stay at uh, jobs for so long, all right? So those were the uh, stereotypes that I wanted you to see, all right? Which are like pretty much the same characteristics that we were talking about yesterday. Tomorrow, we'll keep on talking about millennials and uh, next week, we're gonna be comparing generations millennials generation x and the previous generation so i think it's quite interesting if you actually get the hang of it guys we need to go all right i'm sorry we passed the hour again but it's it's nice to talk to you guys so thank you so much for being with me if remember that we have the uh, class of apoyo in case you want to 
I mean, you have your schedule, so you can come in and talk to me for 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, everyone. Take good care. Night. Have a good night. 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 Good night.